In this lecture, we will talk about defect, root cause, and effect. This topic is marked as K2. At the end of this lecture, you shall be in a position to differentiate what is root cause and what is its effect. Let's begin by defining root cause. It is the earliest actions or conditions that contributed to creating the defects. This means that when you find a defect, you also have to find the first condition that caused the defect. Here, we have an example to help us understand this. Say, we get this requirement. Once the speed is more than 150 km per hour, red light shall glow. The speed needs to be more than 150 km per hour. After getting this feature, customer is unhappy. Because customer checked this device and made the observation that there is a defect. Why? Because when he set the speed to 116, he expected the red light to be on, but he found that it's still off. Now, to figure out why this is a defect, we have to do a root cause analysis. We are in the testing stage now, but we have to go back a step to the implementation stage or coding stage. Here, we find that there is a condition that was implemented incorrectly. If speed is equal to or greater than 150. However, our job is not yet done. Remember, we have to find the earliest condition. This means that we have to go one stage back again, which means the requirement or design stage. In this stage, we found that some of the developers have written this system requirement. Red light shall glow when speed is more than 150. So instead of 115, they wrote 150. And because of this, the implementation was done incorrectly and we found the defect in the coding. However, our job is not yet done since we have to find the earliest condition. When we investigated more, it was found that since the communication was verbal, this problem occurred. Now comes the point which you need to understand. Now, your job is to identify effect, failure, fault, or root cause. Customer is unhappy is effect. Observation made by customer is failure. These two statements are defect. And all this problem occurs due to miscommunication, so this is the root cause. So we don't stop at this point. Now we need to find the solution to avoid such problems. So action over here is further communication will be done via email. We will see one more example to illustrate what we learned about defect and root cause analysis. Here is the life cycle of defect root cause analysis. This life cycle starts with a customer complaint, which is also the effect. Why is he complaining? Because he has come across a failure. He has received incorrect interest payment calculation. So the customer is trying to calculate his interests, but received an incorrect result. This was a failure. When we analyze this failure, we find that it was caused by a single line of incorrect code. When we further investigate this defect, we find out that the wrong code was written because of the product owner's misunderstanding of how to calculate interest. This was the root cause of the defect that made the customer complain. So we have this information. The product owner didn't know how to calculate interest. But we can't stop there. We have an entire team, so how is it that the product owner could make this mistake? What we do next is called action. We figure out what to do so this never happens again. We train the product owner in interest calculation. This way, they will not repeat this mistake again. So. 
You see how everything is connected. This is how root cause analysis works. It starts from an effect that is the complaint and ends with an action that is our method to correct the root cause. Now, we'll look at why we need to do a root cause analysis. The first point is to prevent a significant number of future defects from being introduced. We want to make sure that new defects don't crop up in the future. The second point is to reduce the occurrence of similar defects in the future. So we don't want this interest calculation error to crop up again in our system. The third point is to improve the process.